Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and um, I will once again I've, I've done this video a long time ago um, 2016 um, is the last time I talked about this officially and I think it's time to uh, refresh a little bit we have a lot of new viewers on the channel and there's a few things that is interesting to understand on the reception of signals on shortwave we talk about target areas very often and you know when you look at schedules of shortwave stations you'll often see oh, Radio Romania to Eastern North America or you know Radio Japan to Africa or whatever um, the station is and most shortwave broadcasters have a target audience where they are broadcasting to technically that target audience is where the signal is the best but Shortwave being shortwave, it doesn't stop there. There's no walls stopping the signal from continuing beyond the target area. And that's the beauty of shortwave because it enables us to listen to tons of broadcasts not intended to our target areas, to our area, but still you can listen to it easily. So how do you understand if you can listen to a target area? Of course, you got to always remember there's the day-night pattern that has to be followed typically uh, higher frequencies won't propagate during the night lower frequencies will, won't propagate during the day so that's a basic knowledge you need to know you won't hear a signal on six megahertz that is crossing a large path of sunlight you know it's not gonna get through six thousand seven thousand kilometers in full sunlight on six megahertz it will at nighttime or in an hybrid way, like, you know, if it's the path is halfway lit by the sun, halfway in darkness, sometimes it might work. Uh, and same thing for, you know, you're listening to the 16 meter band, which is 17 megahertz. Well, uh, that signal might broadcast, might work from, you know, that area from to your area. If it's daylight across all of that path, because 17 megahertz requires daylight to actually work most of the time but it won't if the path is total darkness between you and that area also once again there's that hybrid thing so it means that if for example it's nighttime and darkness where you are but you're listening to a signal that comes from an area where it's daytime and the majority of the path is daytime before it goes into nighttime that means you might be listening into a signal on 17 megahertz a, f a few hours, you know, one or two hours, uh, a few hours after sunset, for example. Now, how do you know if, you know, a signal can be heard in uh, your area once you understand, you know, that a frequency might be propagating to you because of daytime or nighttime patterns? Is what's decided deciding that you actually going to receive a signal or not well one of the things is target areas why because that means they're actually sending the signal to a specific area and are you within or in the same line as the target area because it might be the case i'll give the first example i listen to nhk radio japan 2030 ut from Madagascar French language that is intended to Africa but it packs a pretty good signal here in the East Coast of North America and so if it's for Africa how come I can get it now look at Madagascar Madagascar is right here so I just circled Madagascar here and if you take Madagascar it's broadcasting in that general direction. I don't know why my screen goes black. I don't know if you guys have a black screen. So that means that my the signal, general signal, goes in that direction. So it goes towards Africa in that general direction. But have you noticed that my arrow points towards North America also? That means that that signal crosses the Atlantic Ocean because the frequency chosen 9855 plus the time of day that the broadcast is actually going on makes it possible for that frequency to get up to 
North America. So that's why knowing the target area of a broadcast is important. Um, another example is that transmitters aren't, you know, perfect. And what I mean perfect is that the antennas also will leak some signals around them. They are directional, but it's not perfect. There's a lot of that signal that is actually also sent what we call backscatter from the backside of the antenna, for example. And remember that a signal, as it actually travels through distances, actually widens in its general area that it will actually be re uh, received. So it actually can actually really be received in a very wide um, range of countries, depending on where you're listening to. Um, another example of this is, for example, I hear um, Radio France. They broadcast to Africa from France. So let's, uh, let's go here. Broadcast to Africa, so it broadcasts on that side of things. So it broadcasts down to Africa. And you might say, well, how come I'm hearing it here? Well, that is the effect of the signal, the antenna not being perfect at you know, sending all of its energy in a target area. What helps me out here? Well, 11995 at the time chosen is a frequency that is possible across the Atlantic Ocean for me. So that means that uh, signal, even though it's weaker because it's really sending away from me, is still there. It's going to be weaker, but it's still going to be there. And it's still going to propagate to me. So this is important to understand. So there's a mix of all of this using target areas and using, um, you know, the proper frequency at the proper time is all helping out and understanding if a signal can make it to your area. And of course, the power levels used will help out, you know, if a uh, a transmission is 500 kilowatts, it has more chance of being heard than it if it has only 50 kilowatts. But you'd be surprised at how signals can really be amazing uh, depending on the time. Um, amateur radio operators, and it's a question that um, has been asked, um, you know, knowing the azimuth of, the, uh, of a signal or of, of where a signal might be coming from or this is more for amateur radio. I mean, most of us, even though an MLA-30 loop antenna, for example, is directional, its directional pattern in shortwave is very small. So that means it doesn't really have much of an impact if you rotate on very long distance signals on shortwave. But on there are antennas that are extremely directional, and those are used mostly by amateur radio operators. That means amateur radio operators actually are, if you are using a directional antenna, might have a good use for a map that is the azimuth map, centered on where you live. So these maps are kind of custom because the center of the map is your location in the world and you'll have the azimuth or the degrees for other target areas around the world when you have a very directional antenna now that becomes important because if you want to hit Europe or North America or South America knowing what azimuth to point your antenna to will actually help you get a lot more signal but azimuth use is mostly for amateur radio uh, more than listening. In, in, in our listening hobby in general, most of us use antennas that are non-directional or the directional capabilities of the antenna are so uh, small that it doesn't really matter that much. So we don't necessarily take into account the azimuth, but we'll take account in account something else in what I just talked about, which is target areas and knowing, you know, frequency versus direction of where the signal's going to and coming from, that's going to help out in, you know, understanding if I can or not hear a station on shortwave. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and thank you for watching our videos.